All right, Papi, we're gonna get right into it right away. This or that. Would you rather get kicked in the nuts or put your daughter on a plane where the pilot still hasn't finished flight school? You know what? I, I, I didn't know how easy it is to fly a plane, <laughs> but I don't need my nuts anymore. So, <laughs> I'm two and out. I don't need those things anymore. So, yeah, definitely I will take being kicked in the nuts by by what by a donkey said by a horse, by a horse? By yeah horse. some serious Seat that's biscuit. some deep pain but at least i'll have yeah. my daughter you'd rather do that yeah i'll get over the pain yeah but yeah <laughs> i think i think a student once so, asked me but they, no, like she fell or tripped in the classroom and i was like are you hurt no what what happened like nobody saw her or something like that and she's like but i'm hurt I'm like no nah, it doesn't matter you could get over being hurt but you can never get over embarrassment <laughs> and they, they they made a santana Coast page and it's, it's on the it's on the santana Coast page like we'll heal we oh, will yeah. heal I but see, we I will see. never get over the embarrassment never it's never gonna happen you know you made it you know you made it when your students make a instagram page dedicated just on you fuckers did two years in a row you made it puppy (laughs) so the reason why i asked that is because uh recently i read two articles in relation to education um in arizona the governor just recently Mm. signed legislation um that basically lowers the the requirement to teach I saw that. um, It says uh, the education requirement for teachers in Arizona has changed. Uh, Under legislation, Governor Ducey signed earlier this week, a person only needs to be enrolled to get their college degree to begin teaching. His name is Governor Ducey. Governor shit like a deuce. Doug. Doug Ducey. (laughs) He didn't drop a deuce. Yeah. He didn't drop a deuce. He drops a deuce. Yeah. I mean that that's that's an absolute welcome to Arizona. That that is so that's pretty that's pretty loaded law and, he, and with every law there's consequences. It. But go ahead, go ahead. So he signed this legislation because of the obvious teacher shortage in the state. Yeah. Just like in a lot of states yeah. there are uh shortages in, in for teachers. Yeah. Um and so either because they're leaving the profession completely or what's very common in Arizona, and I'm guilty of this, is that many teachers leave to other states because I mean, they pay Look at it, it, define, define guilty, right? Um, th- this is the law of supply and demand. This is <laughs> economics. You're like, well, do I get paid enough? Economics. Well, if you don't get paid, en- mm-hmm. if you don't get paid enough, that means somebody else is willing to offer you the money, right? But if if nobody's willing to offer you the yeah. money, then that's really how much you're worth. This this is lost supply and demand. So somebody else is willing to offer you more money. And you send me billboards of like Texas offering more money if you move over there. And yeah. so in Phoenix, in the Phoenix uh-huh. area, there literally were billboards bought out by districts in Texas. I think specifically yeah. Dallas. The, the Dallas school districts bought billboards in Phoenix trying to recruit teachers over to to their their districts. Amazing. And they would put the starting salary and how much you can yeah. make. And it's just like, wow. Yeah. Like they know They didn't use EdJoin. Where to recruit They didn't use EdJoin, they used a billboard. And the no. thing and the thing about it, and we, we kind of hit on this yeah. earlier and we could do a whole show on this is um what are the pluses and minuses of leaving and the first thing you said well obviously the salary like you double your salary right and then there's other aspects to it california is a very union strong state even though the supreme court passed this law where you every like every state every union is now a right to work union every like you can't force people to pay their union dues and i do know a couple of people that don't but for the most part people still do but arizona has always been a right to work state so it, you know, it's it's not very union strong, but anyway. Yeah, and so for the first eleven years of my career, I, I taught in Arizona, 
and now that I work in California, but I still live in Arizona, yeah. I definitely can see the difference between having a union and not having a union. Yeah. You know, um, but as a matter of fact, literally this morning, uh, I ran into a friend at the gym and they just got a job in California. Mm -hmm. Like just literally like within the past you week. You said in Colexco. Partly it was because no. the, the pay... Yeah, the pay is significantly way higher than what they were getting paid here. Mm. So it's like you said, it's supply and demand, and um, it's kind of like common what sense. What subject do they teach? You know, why, and I was kind of like, why well, I was going to go into the why are they passing these laws? Like, why are they lowering the standards for for the profession? If you want to maintain your your workforce, yeah. if you want to retain your yeah. quality. And you just you gotta pay better. Well, that it's, yes, that's not just in yes. education. It's everywhere in whatever industry. Everywhere. You gotta pay better. Yeah, I mean they they have they and have a lot of like, requirements. If you want to to get into education, they do. Mm -hmm. But at least in California, like yeah, they they, they I mean I, I made, I think I made somewhere close to a hundred, somewhere around one hundred ten thousand dollars last year, so, something like that. And I I like to, and the people that tell you not to share your salary information, by the way, ours is public record. You can look it up. But uh, it, yeah, it's, it's always been historically, me, say, you what do we out. do for a living? We're history teachers. Yeah. And so historically, you go back and see the people yeah. telling you, hey, don't talk to people about your salary or the actual people running the company. Um, because if people start talking about salary, they find, hey, why, why do they make so much more? Why do they make, you know, that kind of thing. And it's harder to negotiate if not everybody knows what they're making. I remember it was a common thing at UPS. Um, yeah, don't talk about your raise. Don't talk about this. They just don't want to start a, you know, a ruckus. Um, but, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's important. I think it helps recruiting. Um, and the more you pay, the bigger pull you're going to pull from. But So they lowered the standards, so now you don't even need a degree in Arizona. Um, there, there's two parts to that. One is, like, you, well, you said it. it you're going to have a 19-year-old. it old? says. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Yeah, well, it says as long as you're going to school. Well, it's kind of like being a substitute here in California. You'd be allowed to teach. It's, I think you have to finish, like, exactly. three quarters of your coursework here in California. To become a substitute mm -hmm. so but again there's two parts to that because in every job every job that i've ever had the best education is from actually doing the job on the job training that's the actual best education you could get for teaching are does it weed out some people that are a little lazier that aren't willing to new, learn new material mm -hmm. do new things by hey let's get somebody with a college degree i remember as, as a guy Pedro Carranza, when I was going to college, I was like, man, this stuff is useless. And he told me, he told me, um, you know, it's not about what you remember. It, what you're showing your employer, a what a degree shows is that you know how to learn new things if you need to. I was like, wow, that's the best explanation I've ever heard. So if a degree can separate anybody from that is, is that. But now you have the issue of universities are so expensive. I mean, San Diego State alone, I think I graduated 2003 and the, it was the second to last semester I was there. The tuition was eight eighty eight a semester just for tuition alone, and now it's somewhere around four four thousand. So it's 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 quadrupled. It's just about quadrupled 4, since two thousand three. Okay, it's quite from eight eighty eight yeah, to crazy. yeah, it's quadrupled since then. And uh, I, I always I always talk to this about students, but you show the average salary. The average salary has not quadruples so you're gonna go in there and you're gonna do no. what and you're gonna have this crazy college loan and and honestly wiping out student loans biden's talking about that that's not gonna help anything the real issue is how expensive universities are and so that i mean again this is a double-edged yeah. sword you could you could recruit a lot more people that way by lowering the requirements um because really the best training is on the job training like but now so how's the the quality yeah yes the maturity um and yeah you know uh -huh. well it's double edged sword. about the quality of instruction absolutely Abs and, oh god you know like like i just asked you you know if if you were to get on a plane you want to know yeah. you want to make sure that whoever's flying that plane yeah. is qualified yeah and obviously the more experience you have uh -huh. the better uh the better qualified you are but if you don't even have the minimum requirements of that i'm not going to get on that plane as it is I mean, I just kind of got over my, my fear of flying, but but you would not trust that pilot regardless of, you know, 
how many hours you had if they're not qualified no. you would not you would you would rather take a kick to the nuts than put your daughter on that plane right and so there's actually why are we doing that to th- this remind me from oh, a scene why are we doing that with teachers? this actually reminded me of a scene from uh, a league of their own i don't know if you re- how well you remember that movie and gina davis gets a ride to the bar to pick up all mm-hmm. the girls and so there's no Uber back then, and I guess there was no cab or something like that. So he got a ride from like a 10 or 12 year old kid. She got a ride from a 10 or 12 year old kid to the bar, <laughs> and then like he starts hitting on her, and yeah, it says yeah. something like that. But it's like, wait, this is who he drove you, and you know that that kind of thing. So can they drive? Yes. Are there a few kids out there that you could drive? Yes. But it says something about your your experience qualifications when you kind of when you're put to the ringer, um, to to a point. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So is, is teaching an art or is it a science? Let's see. Teaching your... On my degree, it says e- Bachelor of um, Arts. Right? And so... It's, uh, it's both? It's not for everybody. It's ah. not. It, well, it is kind of both. Cause you, you know, but you, but anyways, kind of you hit on a big one. Anything. It's not and for everybody. We've seen it. We, we've, you said it. Right? That, that, and that's, that's the thing. It's not because... It doesn't matter how much you know. Yeah. You can, I've, dude, I've known so many teachers. Can that you, can you grab a crowd? Up here, there's their yeah. brains. But it doesn't matter how much content you know. If you can't get your students to buy you can't in, get a kid to believe in themselves. You're going to struggle. can't get kids to buy into what you're doing. You're going to I struggle. compare teaching to you being know. a. And that's kind of why when we talk about uh, building relationships, yeah. you know, Having yeah. a connection with your classes, that is just as important as the content of the yeah. class. And so it's just kind of like when you when I read things like this, it's honestly it's 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 a slap to it's a slap in the face to teachers yeah. because it's like you I mean, you went to school, you got your bachelor's, you know, eventually you went, you you got your master's, mm-hmm. you know, you got all this education to refine your craft as a teacher. And now it's like, well, we don't have enough teachers, so we're going to lower the standards for everybody else just so we can have a body in the classroom, right? And it's just like, I don't know. Um, but And then I read another article in Florida. And this one's a little bit different, but it's just kind of like, again, if why are you dealing with the shortage of teachers? You know, There's a variety of reasons, but one of the biggest ones is economics, right? If you're not making enough money a livable wage you know if you're not getting paid for what you're worth are you going to stay very long and so a lot of teachers in arizona come from places like the midwest wisconsin michigan illinois they come to arizona because there's jobs in abundance get a couple years and then boom they go somewhere else they go back home they go to the midwest or they'll go to nevada they'll go to texas california because obviously the pay is way Uh better but in, in Florida, um, new uh, sort of legislation is, has just been uh, put into place where it says um, veterans, like military veterans can now teach in Florida even though they don't have a degree. But there's a, there's a catch, right? And so it says uh, the Florida Department of Education announced that military veterans as well as their spouses would receive a 5 year voucher that allows them to teach in the classroom despite not receiving a degree to do so and then there's certain requirements that go with that so you get like a five-year uh voucher to teach but um they must have a minimum of 60 college credits with a 2.5 gpa and they must uh receive a passing score on the uh subject area for your for, for your bachelor's so, for your undergrad what percentage of all your undergrad education have you actually applied to the classroom there's a lot of that theory no you personally that you, you get, personally right yeah theory stories from the classes that theory I took? stories all that how much is that your undergrad I couldn't. Uh-huh. I, I, I couldn't yeah. tell you, because uh, I mean, yeah, you 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 learn about the psychology side and you understand of the. Of, I didn't learn much of that. Know, behaviors. Yeah. And you, 
Well, you. I learned you it now. Like education psychology classes, sociology. Yeah, but. No, I'm saying, like, in order even to your really your, your get undergrad, you you got that you got that kind of education. Yeah. Damn. I went to Arizona. Arizona State, State you know, baby. Where we got yeah. a higher standard. San Diego State. Right? We didn't get any yeah. of that shit. I did go to Harvard um, one summer to the bookstore. Yeah. So, but it kind of just rubbed off, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. No, but like no, but I know what you mean. Like, like how much? You know, of who else went to Harvard? You actually take to. <laughs> But but uh, yeah yeah the, yeah I understand so so you the actual is is uh, as far as doing all that coursework and all of a sudden boom and I remember feeling like that because I had my four year degree I was I learning certain skills. I had no business being in a classroom my first year I I, I think some of my students tell me ah, I don't know but I remember that I remember that feeling I was I find that hard I was to totally unprepared I was man I, it it was an absolute disaster well maybe for content but just knowing you yeah. and your personality. Yeah. I would kind of find that hard to believe yeah. because the way you are. Well, I, like I'll, gi- with, I'll give you one example. You are with, with people in general. I'll give you one example. I used to get real bent out of shape my first year when somebody threw something across the class. And now when I see that, I'll think, say things like, why would you throw that? You didn't even hit him. You know, it, it, like, why are you going to throw it if you're going to miss? You know, they, they just, just to, but it's not, A, I want everybody to throw it. But it's kind of just me- it's finding new ways to mess with the psyche of each individual kid. Because every classroom, I, I always feel like I'm a stand-up comedian, although I'm not a comedian. You're always trying to hold up a crowd. You, you are. Every, every single yeah. individual, we have five classes a day, every single individual class, our job is really to hold their attention, hold up a crowd. In the similar way stand-up comedians do, but their specialty is comedy, our specialty is whatever uh, our craft is. Go ahead. You, you know what I just uh, remembered? One thing that I did take that I learned during my undergrad mm-hmm. is the, the zone of proximity. So the farther away you are from students, the more likely you're going to see behavior issues uh, happen. But if you walk the, you know, walk around the room, you talk to kids, and the, the closer you are with them, you know, the less likely you're going to run into issues with behavior and, and things like that. So, I mean, so I did take that, but I, mainly it. A lot of it I got from observations and my student teaching and actually going into that. But like I, before that, you learn certain little tricks, lesson planning. Uh, there was classes yeah. that I took for history. Because l- like I said, like strategies and teach, teaching, teaching is not for everybody. So there's certain things if that they certain yeah. tools they give you. So if you don't have that natural appeal or whatever, you could take these strategies, apply it to the classroom and grow from there. I always felt like I always approach education like this. Do you remember the movie, the movie Big, Tom Hanks, nineteen eighty-seven? Do you ever seen that movie, Big? Yeah. Okay. So the concept yeah. is concept is thirteen-year-old boy. He's like a weird kind of nerdy guy, uh, a bit of a loser, whatever. He wants to hook up this chick that mm-hmm. he wasn't tall enough to ride this ride, so he wishes he was big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wakes up, he's thirty years old. Has a, if mom doesn't know who he is. They think he's a kidnapper. Runs out. Has got to find a job in New York City. And he gets a job at a toy company. And within a week, he's promoted because the boss sees him messing with toys and the insight he has. But why does he have that insight? Because he's 30 years old, but he remembers his 13-year-old mentality. So I think of one of the biggest things that personally benefits me. In the, and I saw this movie two days ago and it hit me like a ton of bricks. Boom. Like, holy crap. Like, I'm the, I'm, I, I felt like I'm Tom Hanks, but in the classroom. I remember when I was sitting in the classroom, what bored me what entertained me and that's why I point back to teachers like yeah. Cornerstone teachers like Ryan Jeffries uh, Cornerstone teachers like Scott Fullerton two of my favorite teachers of all time legends in my book uh, but for two very different reasons but how do you hold a crowd Fullerton yeah. had his way and uh, Jeffries had his way and, and Jeffries still doing it a different style yeah everyone has a definitely of has holding a different style. crowd yeah so uh-huh. but and so the, the Florida legislation uh, or the other sort of caveat to what i previously said um they also must veterans must have a minimum of 48 months of military service Mm -hmm. completed uh with either uh medical or honorable discharge if they're hired by a school district four years they have to have a a teaching mentor so there's certain things like that are add to that but it just like comes back to the whole thing is like well why are you struggling to hire teachers why are you struggling to hire teachers it begs the question, 
like it begs the question, you know, why are teachers leaving? Yeah. And uh, there's a variety of reasons. Like within the first three years of teaching, there's a uh, there's a burnout, especially for the the if the majority of the teachers that leave leave within the first three yeah, years. Yeah, you you know, and you know that you hit on a big thing that I was thinking about right now is you and I are veterans. We know the hoopla. We know the game. We know this and that. So whenever we get a new administrator coming in, coming up with a new flavor of the month or whatever for the year, we could. We're able to see past that, know what the profession is, and go forward and include whatever they want to talk about. So we include whatever we need to so we don't get fired, that kind of thing. But but if you're a new teacher and you hear all this stuff, and I remember it, whenever we get a new teacher, man, I flock to him. And I'm like, all right, man, you're going to hear this, but what's really going on is this, you know, that kind of thing. is translating what's going on, and I think that's the hardest part for the new teacher, and you hit that one on the head right there. That's why mentorship is so important yeah. for oh yeah the teachers. right mentor. I remember uh-huh. when when I was a when I was a uh, instructional coach. Um, I just remember thinking about okay, what were some of the things that I struggled with? Yes. when I first started yes. teaching the big the movie big concept that in mind. the movie and big I would concept. I always yeah. tell them like like one of the things I would tell them is like don't worry so much about the content. I mean, you need it, but. Focus more on how are you going to get your students to listen to you, yeah. you know. And so I always tell them, like, listen, make sure that your students know that you care, right? Uh-huh. Because if they know that you care, then they'll buy into you yeah. a lot quicker. Yeah. And then the content comes next. Mm-hmm. But I remember, like, my biggest thing was content, Yeah. right? Content was like, oh, I need to learn this and that, but, like, eventually that comes with with practice and experience but it's more like yeah. the other things and and that's why i also think that like with in our profession there's so much more than knowing math or science that's important obviously because you know the students got to learn certain skills but there's the other things and you know it's kind of sounds cliche but teachers are more than teachers yeah you know you're you're a counselor you're a psychologist you're a coach yeah. you're a mentor you're all these things because so many students deal with so many things, especially nowadays. It, but it, it seems like and if we, the, I remember, and if you invest a little bit more time at the beginning yes. to get to know them, yes. then you're able to kind of put together a recipe that works best for your classroom and then other on, students. on the on the appearance like kids walk in and we, we did the same thing when we were kids. We're like, all right, the teachers there and they're gonna do the thing. We're gonna do our thing and. But what they don't realize, and what I got into teaching is, in, when I first got into teaching, I'm like, all right, there's 30 kids, roughly, 30, 35 kids sitting in front of me in the classroom, and they're with me for about an hour, and like, I don't know, 90% of Mexican, and the, that, that's, what, that's what I first saw. But after teaching for a little bit longer, I realized this is more like uh, the movie The Matrix. Look at that kid over there, he has these social emotion issues, that kid over there, it's got ADD off the wall. This one right here just got home last night because they were out till midnight because they were on some baseball trip. That one, over, they, there's just so many different th- things going on in the classroom. Every kid, it doesn't matter the race, and some it's not even always social economic. Right? I mean, all those things play a factor. Yeah. But each you're looking at thirty to thirty six, each individual, everybody's got a story every different day. Mm-hmm. And once I realized that, it was like. Yeah. Boom, Okay. All right. All right. This yeah. is what I'm dealing with. Instead of me just feeding information, I'll never forget out a coach that would be explaining stuff, but we would get so bored of hearing the long explanation. A lot of the stuff wouldn't record. And then we'd come to the game or some practice that we didn't do right. I already taught this stuff to you. And, like, just because you said it doesn't mean you taught it. Mm. Right? And you know, when you're a kid, just because the teacher said it doesn't mean you absorbed it. Right? So is that the kids' fault? Is that the teacher's fault? Maybe somewhere in the middle. It depends on you know. There's a lot, a lot of fa- there's a lot more to it than that. But it, it, as far as the, that spectrum that I'm talking about, but um. yeah, yeah. Because if you tell them, oh, what's that quote? Tell me and I'll forget. Um, show me. I get it. <laughs> yeah. There's a quote that kind of goes in, yeah. but it goes into like the teacher. I'll have to look it up. Uh-huh. But if you tell, if you just like, well, I told you already. If you like, kind of just lecture and expect him to learn it, there, you know, 
it, the percentage is very low. Yeah. They, that's why I, I believe in so much like hands-on activities. You want to put the learning yeah. in their hands. I, yeah. Um, and anytime you you kind of involve, you know, that type of learning, and then sort of imbibe, involve some kind of emotion yeah. to it, yeah. they'll definitely learn it a lot. I, I've, 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 I've actually a lot I've been too. fantasizing about. I have an outline in my head. I need to put it on a paper, but. Because, you know, I told you I always flock to new teachers. And you said a stat that I didn't realize. Most people mm-hmm. leave the profession within three years. We are scaring our new mm-hmm. talent away. Now, don't get me wrong. Not everybody's a talent. But what if they are and we're scaring them away from the – so whenever I see a new teacher, I, like, flock to them. And so um, – But potential yeah. talent. Yes. Like, there's yes, a that's lot it. of new teachers that have a lot of potential. I, I, my you first year – into that. My first year was complete dump. Uh, the lady that was doing my – induction program at icoe she actually told me you know maybe you shouldn't even be a teacher like she showed it mags mags wow. can attest to this mags was my support provider mags is she calmed me down no nick you're gonna be fine blah, 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 like that <laughs> but you know it, but these are the people that that are our mentors and and um so anyways you you sent me a stat earlier and and i was gonna share it and hang, hang on a second oh, oh, oh yeah so there was uh uh, it is a, a post from Teacher Misery School Districts and, and, she, and is Amber yeah. Ragnar she says remember when y'all told all the teachers they should quit if they didn't like the crappy pay in public in public hate mm-hmm. well she said they took your advice and then she posted something I guess an article came out in May in Texas mm-hmm. and Houston Fort Bend Aldine and CY Fair I don't know anyways Houston 800 teacher vacancies in Houston alone Fort Bend, 288 teachers. Aldine, 452 teachers. CY Fair, 600. Like, that's that's insane. And, and California's got their own issues. Arizona's got separate. And, and Texas has their own issues. I have my... I could spew out a million things. Well, I mean, not a million. I, well, you know I, I love my job. Out. I could spew out a bunch of issues that there is and is creating problems for There's the kids dire- directly in the class... Or indirectly. When, finally, when the kids get to our classroom issues that the kids were having just in the system alone but yes but oh. on that note i could and i from am i speaking from experience when you how should i put this we struggled at my previous school district at my previous school to hire science and math teachers mm-hmm. every single year yeah and it was like a rotating uh, set of teachers. Those are every two. Whoa, we have a new teacher. Here. The two most in like demand. We, ne- we didn't have any, uh-huh. especially with my last three years. I remember. I don't think there was a, a science teacher. There that la- that was. Had more than five years experience. Yeah, that's crazy. And it was just a constant thing. Uh-huh. So, and they were like emergency certified. Mm-hmm. You know, they were they weren't. They needed bodies, mm-hmm. right? And so they're and so there we're trying to help them. We're trying to give them ideas and all this stuff, and they're drowning and just trying not know how to teach. They were set up for to fail. At the same time, they were set up to fail. But who is affected by this? Uh-huh. The kids the most, yeah. And that's where the students, uh-huh. the students are. Why aren't the kids performing? And that's why I mean, like, if you want to attract quality, mm-hmm. and not now, let me rephrase that: quality teachers are leaving, mm-hmm. right? But if you want to keep your quality teachers, obviously, you need to compensate them better, make them feel more valued. Mm-hmm. And so when I see laws like this, you know, happen nationwide, it's like it's it's going to be a continuous thing until you literally sit down and say, how can we invest more of yeah. the people in your personnel mm-hmm. that are working day in, day out with the kids? Yeah. You know? And so it's it's going to be an ongoing thing. It's just, and I don't know, it's just weird. It's not going to happen overnight. Weird. This is going to take years. Thing. And I just, yeah. all I know about this whole situation, I have my insight, I have my own perspective. We have issues in our department. You actually have a bigger perspective because you've actually seen things go down in Arizona, which is super interesting to me. And there's so yeah. many other questions I want to ask you. I but think uh, like a third, at one point, a third uh-huh. of our staff was emergency certified where I was like, a third. That's crazy. It's that's, just like that is crazy. That's actually basically thing. you had long term substitutes yeah. covering. Yeah. yeah. And so when in our, in our district, when mm-hmm. we see like, oh, we need to hire this, like it's like one person in the department. Uh-huh. Oh, we need an English teacher 
we you know we're down a seat i was like that's it shoot like back then there were short like four five science teachers mm -hmm. in a de you know or four or five teachers in a department yeah every single i mean my, my brother-in-law is super know, super bright guy one of my biggest influences uh, shaping the how i think um he, you know he, he has he runs his own company and he has all these ideas for education we sit there I mean, we used to break it down this and that and I just asked a stupid question. What's the stupid question? Well, why didn't you go into education? <laughs> the uh, the answer is obvious, right? Well, cause the answer the answer is like, but hey, absolutely obvious. Hey, but yeah. but you get summers off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, shouldn't that be enough? Put me to work like, one oh, more. You teachers get some. Put me to work one more okay. month, and I'll make ten grand more. Yeah, it's, well, yeah, I know a yeah. lot of teachers that actually work in the summer doing other jobs. But it, I mean, because, but you, you know what I mean. It, even even at, at my salary, even at my salary, like I get in yeah. not don't get me wrong, it's not take home because uh, California has one of the highest income tax in the in the country. But you know, it's, yeah. but whatever. Any anyway, case, case in point <laughs> is, all right, I work one more summer for take home around six seven grand. Uh, you know, one more month out of the year, and it's like, all right, is that the solution? No, it's it's really not. There's something bigger going on here. Anyways, um, we want to roll into That's, the toast. The well, I was gonna say just some weird laws, but speaking of weird laws, yeah, you came up with a a healthy set of weird laws. So I did. You you want to you want to hold up on those for 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 our next episode? Sure. It's, yeah. Like, can you share one of the share one of them? Share one of them. We have to hear one. Uh. Okay. So I saw I saw a lot of these. Go I'm to California. Gonna, Oh, you want to go to California? I'll sh go to California, and then I'll share uh, an Arizona one. Okay. San Francisco. In San Francisco, a lot of laws can be done, but for whatever reason, they made a law at one point. Walking an elephant down Market Street in San Francisco is illegal unless the elephant is on a leash. Now here in my head I'm thinking the leash is gonna change things, but okay. What do I know about elephants? No. Yeah. You got an uh, you got an Arizona one? And yeah. So the, and this so there's one that says uh, I definitely want to hunt I'd, camels. Yeah. In Arizona. What the hell? And there's like history behind it, but I mean, obviously it's not. I'm sure, a, it's pretty old. Uh -huh. it, it's yeah, it's pretty it's old. A desert. Uh, 1855, um, when they imported camels uh, with the U.S. Army, whatever. But the one that I found the most interesting, uh, that one's pretty interesting. But it, it was illegal for women to wear pants in Tucson. Oh yeah, at one point. And so, uh, over a century ago, it was illegal for Tucson residents to appear in public wear, wearing clothing that uh, not of his or her sex. This could have technically applied to women wearing pants, mm -hmm. but no article of clothing is specifically mentioned. The police, the Tucson Police Department, uh, certainly pays no heed to this law, even if it still exists today. But it was just kind of one of those weird things that they uh, tried to enforce before. But I have a, bun I have a, bun a, I have a bunch written seven. down. I, I, I think uh, the same for part two. Um, yeah. Well, I saw your list and I was like, wow. Yeah. Those are yeah. those are definitely. Yeah. A whole a, a whole episode in itself. So. Yeah, we just came but up anyways, in thirty minutes. Uh, let's let's just roll let's roll one over to a, another episode. Uh, for now, for go sure. Go for it. What you got? So, Papi, what's the best thing you've seen all week? Uh, the best thing I seen all week was well, that thing you sent me about all the teacher vacancies. Um, it just you know it just got me thinking about what a new teacher goes through. Um, but and, and I already shared it. Just all the eight, just eight hundred teacher vacancies. And this is in May that article was written. Just mind blowing. Just it's, it says a lot about what's going on, not only just in Texas but around the country. That is definitely an issue. Yeah. And people are saying it's oh, it's because of COVID. I mean, there was stuff going on before COVID. There was, yeah. and COVID just made it that much well, worse. Actually, when COVID pandemic began, that semester after, a lot of people went into retirement. Said, you know what? Uh, I don't. Yeah. I don't need to deal with this, yeah. and uh, just kind of just, it was mm -hmm. too much, and a lot of people went into retirement, and that kind of forced districts to try to recruit and hire mm -hmm. new personnel. Yeah. During uh, a pandemic, yeah. and it was definitely yeah. very difficult. So, 
Okay. I'm getting uh, ready to be the best thing I've dance. seen all week. Oh, go go ahead. Okay. That's Be- best thing I've seen all week. You, you know how uh, social media, uh, you you get like notifications of memories and stuff like that. Years yes. Ago, five years ago, whatever. Yes. So I got a notification. Uh, five years ago, on this date, it was like a pop up, and I was like, oh, and it was uh, a video. Uh, I was watching El Chavo del Ocho with my grandpa ah. on his couch. And we used to just, we used to just chill and watch Chavo del Ocho, just hang out. Like my grandpa's biggest thing was. He just wanted people over. He just wanted yeah. company all the time. And yeah. any any excuse, just come over. Mm-hmm. Quería ruido. He just wanted noise in the house. And so mm-hmm. that was pretty cool because uh, today would have been my grandpa's 101st birthday. And so, oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it was like, oh, dang, that's pretty cool. And he only passed away a couple years ago? Like a memory. 2019. Yeah. Uh, right before the Three pandemic uh, started. Damn. Yeah. Uh, 97, 98 uh, ish she made it to? Amazing. He was 98. Yeah, he, he, uh, a month after his 98th birthday, passed away. My so grandfather also made in. First. My grandfather also made it into his 90s, and his wife was 10, 15 years younger than him. Uh, but whatever. Uh, case point is, he once said that uh, when you're married, um, whoever lives longer is the one that's going to suffer more. And they're like, what? Why? Uh-huh. Well, because then they have to see everybody die around them. So the idea that your grandfather wanted noise around him all the time. Oh yeah. yeah, I can see that. And one of the, the one of the things that in my family, in my mom's side, the Lopez side, uh, yeah, we enjoy in, in our company is a drink of tequila. So, in honor you of asked my grandpa's, me. hey man, you got birthday. tequila? And I was like, there's a bear shit in the woods. Yeah. Like, so the one I chose today is my my mezcal from uh, from why why can't I remember it? Oaxaca. I saw on the Anthony Bourdain show. And I could find it at beverages and more, and it has this. You could taste the oak with the. Bre- yeah. I love this stuff, man. It's my go-to. I wonder. So anyways, I said, what you got? What you got, sir? I was like, we're gonna we're celebrating today. We so, are. Uh, it, with that in mind, we're gonna take a, a celebratory birthday shot in honor of my grandfather's hundred first birthday. Mm-hmm. So I got a little bit of uh, the secret secret sauce here. So Se- grandpa's Salucita, secret sauce. Salud. Salud. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. All right, Papi. That was good. Uh, see you next week. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely uh, we'll talk about it. Oh yeah, that's right. We're going back. Yeah. That's it. See you next week. We'll, I hope. We'll, uh, uh, start on I hope. I hope you signed up for my Google Classroom class. And I, I, my Ooh. energy that's going into it is more like okay. If I'm a new teacher, if I'm somebody that's new to the Google Classroom, mm-hmm. what are some issues I might feel? And uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to saying a lot of inappropriate stuff, as I did last year. <laughs> and I hope some teachers aren't going to like it. Some teachers will. But the bottom line is, you know what? Yeah. If I don't have fun, that means my crowd's going to get bored. Mm. That's true. Let's go, baby. That's true. But yeah. All right. All right, puppy. I'll see you next time. Cool. Yeah.